Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you all for joining us today for our message. Why am I saying the message? Because we have a tour service as well. So make sure and find our tour service uh, on Facebook, YouTube. It is all throughout online. We're losing one of our carriers, uh, Google+. Plus. They're shutting down, but we don't have a lot of followers on there as well. I'm assuming that no one does, the reason why they're closing it down. But uh, follow us online. We are all over the place. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we have a special message for you today, so don't go anywhere. Uh, today is March the 23rd, 2019. It is the 16th day of the Hebrew month of Adar 2, or the second Adar. Why is there two Adars? Because we are in a leap year. And uh, the Feast of Purim is in the month of Adar. Mm. And we just got through celebrating Purim uh, two days ago, actually. Uh, and uh, last week, if you want to go back to the, oh, what would that be, the 16th? Last week was the 16th. Go back and watch that video and we teach on the Feast of Purim. And we had a good Purim service here also on Wednesday night as well. Hey, go to olivetreemessianic.org. I say that uh, website a lot to you. I hope you remember it by now. olivetreemessianic.org. Uh, maybe you're watching this on Roku. I don't know if uh, you guys know what Roku is, but you can watch this on the big screen on Roku, right in your home, live right now. But go to our uh, website. There you can give to us. Many of you give through PayPal. Uh, thank you for that. Many of you mail in your contributions. Thank you for that. You can find our website there so you can know exactly where to find us. Okay, today's tour portion. I always emphasize the tour reading. Whether the message is about that, whether, whether anything else is about that, I emphasize the tour reading so that you guys will read it. Today's tour portion is number 25, Sav which means command. Our Torah reading can be found in Leviticus chapter 6, verse 1 in the Hebrew. And you see the readings there on your screen, so I'm not going to go over those again, okay? Uh, again, if you want to hear these readings read, go back and find our Torah portion video that we just did, okay? Our Torah service. Okay, for today's message, we have a special guest. It's not going to be me teaching today. No amens, please, on that one. Uh, we have a special guest from Israel, so give him your close attention. Today we have Pastor Salim Shalash. I, I hope I said that last name Correct. right. Me and Salim's on a first name basis, so I've not even pronounced his last <laughs> name. Uh, Salim, come on up. Everybody give Salim a hand. Thank you. Salim can make Aliyah to the bima of the olive tree. Thank you. It's Thank you, Salim. It's an, honor. it's an honor for you to be here with us because Amen. as you will see in the message today, this is truly, we've sung about this today, Hine Matov, this is truly Jew and Gentile, one in Messiah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Salim. God, God bless, bless you. bless you, brother. Hallelujah. All the glory to God. That is the will of God in these days. So uh, normally I, I would like to see you smiling. So I'll tell you a nice story about a rabbi that he has visited the Vatican. And, you know, while he's visiting there, you know, he's, you know, with the pop going together around, and he suddenly saw a red phone in the corner. And the rabbi asked the pop, what is it, what this phone is? He said, we speak with God through it. He said, can I can make a phone call? He said, yes, but it cost about one million dollars. He said, oh, I don't have this money. And they left and went back. Two months later, you know, the Pope came to visit the rabbi in Jerusalem. And while the, he's taking him, you know, tour in the cartel, you know, the Pope saw a red phone in the corner. And he asked the rabbi, what is it? He said, it's telephone between us and God. He said, can I use it? He said, for sure, but you need to pay one shekel. It's half, less than half U.S. dollar. He said, that's it? It's very cheap. Why? He said, it's a local phone call. <laughs> so, 
So, so how great to be in the presence of God. You know, many of you are thinking, who is Salim? What he's doing? He's from Israel. Arab. Does that mean Muslim? What his background is? And I want to tell you that when I'm saying Arab, doesn't mean I'm a Muslim that converted to Christianity. We are basically Christians. And how do we know that? If you read your Bible in Acts chapter 2, you will find that there were Arab worshiping God in Jerusalem in the holidays of the Jewish people. And it was 600 years before Islam came. So if you say Arab, doesn't mean a Muslim converted to Christianity. And today I have also the honor to be with you, the privilege to be with you. Have also my wife, Nasreen, with me today. You know, the government all with me today. So <laughs> I'm so happy, you know, it's not always having the chance to be together. I will share a little bit of my testimony, how God changed my life. And really, I born and I grew in a Catholic family. And my father was so religious, he was attending the church all the time. And he wanted the best for his son. So he said, I want to put my son inside the church with the priest so he can grow in the church, grow in the church and become a priest. And I was five years serving inside the temple with the priest. After five years, I said, if this is God, I don't want him. I left the church. I lived my own life. I studied in the Hebrew University as travel agent. I continued my studies as a hotel manager in Holiday Inn School. And I was a policeman for four years as a volunteer. Until the 6th of August, 94. On this day, something happened that changed all my life upside down. And on this day, I lost a friend that she was a believer, and she believed in Yeshua. And she was talking about Yeshua all the time, but I didn't care until she passed away in an accident on this day. A huge truck fall on her small car, so they can't remove you know, the iron from the hair car, and the fire started in her car, and she was burned alive. Then a lot of questions come to my mind. What is after death? Is there life after death? She's just 19 years old. And there's no confirmation to any one of us that she will live 60 or 70 or 80. And I was... Asking all these questions, I heard a voice speaking to me directly, speaking to me in my heart, saying, Salim, someone died, new one will born. Mm. I didn't understand that. But I, under, I understand that this is the voice of God. And I said, God, if you are the one that's talking to me, please show me the way. And for my first time, I have my own Bible in my hands. Because I've been taught that I'm not holy enough to carry the Bible in my hand. And I was reading just the New Testament. Because also I've been taught that the Old Testament, it's a rubbish book. It belonged to the infidel Jews, that they crucified our Savior. All these poisoned ideas that I was filled in was carried in my thoughts and in my heart. And I start to read the Bible. And every time I was reading the Bible, I was more and more thirsty for the Word of God. And we need to understand that as believers, believe in Yeshua, we taste the Word of God. We not just read it. When you're tasting, you know, the psalm we've been teaching about, Psalms 84, it says in English how lovely. But in, in, in the Hebrew language, in Arabic language, you see it, you know, how sweet. Mm. Yeah. Why? Because we taste the Word of God. Yeah. And, you know, I was reading all the time the Word of God. 
I decided to study theology. And I'm involved with Bethlehem Bible College. I finished my baccalaureate there. I continue my studies. And I decided to continue my studies, you know, my master in the ICB College. It's the Israeli College of the Bible. And on this period, on this study, something happened. When I get into the first lesson, we were 12 Arab pastors and 12 Jewish Messianic pastors. <laughs> you know, when I get in at the beginning, I thought, who they are? Did, did they bring us rabbis to teach us? <laughs> and I didn't know about them. I've heard a little about them, but I didn't know them. When I start to speak to them, and I, I, I saw the jealousy for loving Yeshua and serving Yeshua from all their hearts, even with the persecution that they have, they still love the Lord and serve from all their hearts. Something, you know, come to my mind. Romans 9, 10, and 11. And I remember the words of God when God said, you know, the, with the disobedience of the Jews, we received the grace. Mm -hmm. And the Gentiles grafted it in, the olive tree, and we become part of God well. Yes, and God redemption plan. Yes. But in the end of the days, the Bible teach that the Gentiles will be light for the Jews. And we need to understand the plan of God that He's bringing His family back again. Yes. If you agree or not, He's not waiting for your decision. It's His decision. Yes. And the Bible says that He will gather His family back again. He will bring His people back to the land. The establishment of the new Israel, it's not coincidence. It's the plan of God. He brings his people and need to understand, I'm not talking in political situation. I'm talking in a spiritual situation that God really bringing his people. And the Bible says that all of Israel will be saved. So what are we doing as Gentiles in Israel? Are we fulfilling the plan of God? And while I'm asking all these questions, I said, God, I want you to lead me. Open my eyes. And then, one night I was reading the story of the eldest son and the lost son. And many preach about the father, how great he is. And many preach about the lost son. But no one preach about the eldest son. And I, th I was thinking, God, who is the eldest son? And the Bible, you know, Spoke about him a very little, some, you know, small paragraph. But God said to me, Salim, do you know who is the eldest son? I said, no, Lord, who is it? He said, it's the church today. They are in my house. And at the beginning I said, God, if it's the church, that means we are better than the Jews because they are lost. And the Lord opened my eyes. And I found seven cents that this eldest son did show that he was worse than the lost one. Mm. Yeah. He said to his father, I am serving you like he's doing favor to God. No, it's not. Mm. If the church serve God, because it's honor and privilege for the church to serve the king Amen. of the kings and the Lord of the Lord. Right. A couple of years. Who count the years in the Old Testament? The slave. Because he worked for six years and one year he's free. This son living in his father's house as a slave, not as a son. And never disobey your commandments. Proudness. Spiritual proudness. You never give me a goat. Poorness. To be happy with my friends. Sadness. And your son. He cut every relation with his brother. He forgot that this brother is my brother. Mm, yeah. He said, your son. And the end he started to judge him with adultery and using the money of his father in adultery. Mm -hmm. I was weeping that night because I didn't know the truth for a long time. And I said, Lord, show me the way. And the Lord 
opened my eyes to continue my second master in the same college. And I was studying biblical Hebrew. And if you know, as an Arab, we have two mother languages. We have the Arabic language as a mother language, and we have the Hebrew language as a mother language. But when it's become to biblical Hebrew, it's more complicated. It's more difficult. But when you know it, you will enjoy reading the Old Testament more than anything else. Every name was mentioned in the Old Testament. It's not coincidence. It's by the plan of God. If you read the book of Nehemiah, it's two Hebrew words, Nahamia, that mean God have mercy. What's related to the book of Nehemiah? God have mercy and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. The book of Habakkuk, prophet Habakkuk, it's from the word Hebuk. Hebuk in Hebrew, it means hugs. While Habakkuk, you know, doubt that God left his people, God is saying to him through his name, Habakkuk, I'm still hugging you. No worry. Every name was mentioned. Even the most boring chapter that many believers skip it, don't want to read it, Genesis 5, all these names from Seth to Noah, it's not just name, it's a code. It's the salvation letter that God already gave to us in Genesis 5. And really, when I finished my second master, I said, Lord, I will start to go deep studies in the Old Testament. And I found Yeshua in every book, in every chapter, in every verse. It's all about one person, Yeshua HaMashiach. And from that day on, God put all my heart to preach Jesus in the Old Testament. Many people try to divide our Bible. They say the Old Testament belonged to the Jewish people and the New Testament belonged to us was discussing with one man, and he said to me, Pastor Salim, the God in the Old Testament is not the God in the New Testament. So what do you mean? He said, the God in the Old Testament is God, oh, he's tough, he's harsh, and he's God of wars. And God in the New Testament, he God of mercy. I said, you know what, I agree with you, but I want you to go back home and take out the book of Revelation from the New Testament. Yeah. Because in the book of Revelation, he will come to judge the same way. It's time of mercy. The ark that Noah built, it all was built by Noah and his people. But one thing happened, and it was God closing the door of the ark. And we are still in the time of mercy. But unfortunately, we are far from the Word of God. All the Word again, the Word of God and against of Israel. I finished my second master. And then a lot of red lights start to light in my mind. And I was thinking about what I've been teached about replacement theology. That God replaced the Jews with the church. If really that happened, I will be the first person that I have problem with God. Because if he replaced the Jews with the church, soon he will replace the church with something else. And if God don't keep his promises, I have problem. Because I, when I go to heaven and I say to the Lord, Lord, I'm getting in through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Because you promised me, he will say to me, Salim, do you remember when you agree with the idea that I don't keep my promises? It's not just with the Jews, it's with everyone. So sorry, no place for you here. Yeah. We need to understand that if God promised, he keep his promises. And then I decided to continue my doctorate degree. And it wasn't easy, really, because I have my family had the church in Nazareth and busy all the time. So when I can do it? 
It was starting at 11 p.m. until 2 and 3 a.m. morning every day. While everybody's sleeping, it's time to read and to write. And it was titled with, How Does the Arab-Israeli Conflict Influence on the Theology of Israel? Because many people try to turn the Bible in their direction. What the Torah says, that is the truth. What the Bible teaches is the truth. And if we agree with the idea of replacement theology, we are the first we will face problems soon in our life. We are living in Nazareth. Nazareth today is 81 thousand inhabitants. We are talking about 75% of Muslim and 25% Christian. And when I say 25% Christians, it doesn't mean believers. It's mixed. Doesn't, doesn't mean Baptist or Anglican. It's Catholic, Orthodox, Anglican, Protestant. It's all. And to serve there in Nazareth is not easy. It's a big challenge. There is a lot of challenges we face daily while we're visiting people. A lot of questions. Why? Because all their life they grow with the thoughts that they were changing their minds daily with the bad ideas. And to, to bring them to the Bible, to the Torah, and let them understand the truth, it will take sometimes years. Spending with per person. In 2009, God called us, me and my wife, to start a prayer meeting. Really, we didn't plan to have a church or to be a pastor because I saw the suffering of the pastors. But God will, God's will is different from our. And God, He never chose the perfect. He chose the willing. And when we obey, we start in our house with seven people. Normal prayer meeting. But I want to tell you something. It's very easy to be a pastor. It's very easy to be a teacher. But it's very difficult to be a shepherd. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's something in your heart. Right. Something that you don't study it. It's come with you. Mm -hmm. Taking care for the people. And in two months we become 20. And the church is growing. Say to God, what do you want me to do? What is the next step? I have my war room with I, where I fight with the Lord. I spend some, some days sometimes praying for the Lord. I'm fighting with the Lord because we need the answer. So I call it war room. I'm, I'm a tough man. It's not easy to convince me to do things. So I said, what is the next step? He said, to rent a place, bigger place. Just rent a place around your area. Start in Jerusalem. Start in your area. Mm -hmm. And we rent a place by faith. It wasn't easy because we never collect money. Me and my wife, we're still living by faith. Some people supporting us from Europe and standing with us that they help us to live. My wife, Nisreen, worked three days in the Voice of Hope radio station. It's the first Arabic radio in Israel that confirmed from the Israeli government, from Benjamin Netanyahu himself, and it's reached all the Middle East. Iraq, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, Iran. And even if you download the application, you can listen to this. If you have anybody speak the Arabic language, I would like to encourage him, the Voice of Hope radio. You can download it and ask Nasreen after. So, after we rent the place two years, we become 70. And the place is small. So, what to do? To the war room where we fight with the Lord. And I get to the war room and I ask the Lord, what is the next step? He said, it's very easy to rent a bigger place. <laughs> Got a bigger place, it's more responsibility. And really, this time I ignored for two months. I didn't listen to the voice of the Lord. But 
When you don't listen to the voice of the Lord, he will send someone else to push you forward. And this time it was my wife. She woke up at 7 a.m. morning. And she woke me up and she said, Salim woke up. I saw a vision. I said, what vision, dear? She said, I saw our new place. I said, oh, come on. Once again. I said, okay, sweetheart, go to bed again now. We'll talk later. No, no. Now. And you know, when a woman wants something, she will not give up until she take it. So the best way is to obey. So I pulled my clothes and we went to the area and she pointed to the place. I went down. I get in. It was for a carpenter. And it was full of dust, full of machines, full of wood, no stairs to the second floor, dirty walls, no toilet. I went back to my wife, said, sweetheart, I don't think that you have a vision. I think you have a nightmare. <laughs> it's impossible. And she looked at me and said, what's impossible for human is possible for God. Let's start working. And really, we start working for two months, day and night, until we have our place there. We are renting this place. And this place is big responsibility because it's cost us monthly about 1,500 US dollar. It's a big challenge for a small church. But we trust the Lord that He cover all the need. He promised me. When I left my work, it's like exactly what Abraham did. He, he just listened to the word of God and he left his people, his father, his nation, and he went with God and he know nothing what's waiting for him. And if you ask me how you did that, you left your work, and with all the res these responsibilities, your family, your children, your loan for building your house, how did you? Th I don't know. It's the Holy Spirit. When He leads you, you need to obey. Amen. And He promised me, Salim, I will not give you everything you want, but I promise you, I'll give you everything you need. Amen. And that's totally different. And now the church is growing. We're almost about 110. And now we are praying for a bigger place because the church is busy with projects. We have a lot of projects. We have 10 to 12 projects every year. And I will tell you double of this number is stopped because there is no financial support for doing this project. So we may, you may ask me, why this project? Because we can reach Arab and Jews through this project. Amen. Yeah. Monthly, we have 48 food packages. One of these food packages, we took it to one a family, Jewish family. She is a widow. And when we get into this house, and we give the food, she looked at us and she was shocked. She said, are you Arab? I said, yes, we are. She said, how can Ara bring food to Jewish? We are enemy. I said, no, we are not. Even we have a common thing. Common thing? What is it? I said, it's your Messiah. It's your scriptures. Mm. My Messiah? He didn't come yet. I said, no, he did. And I opened in Isaiah 53. And I start to read the verses. Then we jump to Psalms 22. And then to Proverbs 30. And she was shocked. She said, how I was blind all these years. And she said, what I can do to accept Jesus, Yeshua in my life. And she said, it's just a simple prayer. You just confess to him that you are a sinner, you need a savior. Amen. And she prayed and she accepted him as a savior. Amen. This project that's given, you know, it's not easy to talk and to preach to people. It's not easy. They will not listen to you. Because people got boring from teaching and preaching. They want to see actions. Yeah. Right. We visit the old men houses. We're sharing the gospel. We visit the children department. We have two hospitals. They have children department in Nazareth. We call it Christmas night. We take it toys. And we put it in it. We prepared a letter in our church written on it. That's where are you going to spend your eternity? So we can reach Arab and Jews. We have a calendar that we make 1,200 calendars. 
It's including verses from the Bible and our details, and it's in the wall 365 days. Why someone feel disappointed or frustrated? He need somebody to talk to. So our doors in the church is open for counseling. Even they are not coming to the church, but they need help. So we are there to help and to encourage and to teach. Now we are praying for the vision that God gave to us. I asked the Lord, where is the next place? And the Lord answered me, no more rent. You're going to build my house. Lord, come on. <laughs> it's not renting. You are talking about a project with more than $3 million. And I was thinking, where to bring this money? And I was you know, worried all the time about it because I saw what God is going to give us. It's not just a church. It's a big building with four floors. The first floor is going to be the worship and the, you know, teaching and, you know, the prayer uh, hall. The second floor is going to be for humanitarian aid projects. You know, all our projects we're going to be doing in the second floor. The third floor is going to be counseling offices Sunday school and media. And the last floor is going to be 15 to 20 rooms that we can accept people from abroad to come to pray to the peace between Arab and Jews. And we call it the watchtower. Mm. That's what we believe. And I said to God, God, it's, it's a huge number. That's, I don't know from where to bring it. But I was thinking if people can pay 222 million euros for a football player, soccer, <laughs> God can give us 2 million euros for it. this project. It's this house. So we are praying for this project. And we're still focusing every time, God, what you want us to do to bring your people back, gathering the family again together. Many of you... You know, when I want to see a comedy movie, I just watch the news in Europe at 8 o'clock. <laughs> because I was really thinking from where they bring this news. Everything, everywhere, speaking against Israel. I'm not Jewish coming here to defense Israel. I'm Arab who live in Israel 43 years. And I'm telling you the truth. We've never been persecuted by the Israeli government. As a Christian minority, we are blessed being part of Israel. And as a church, we believe in Genesis 12, 3. Who bless you, Abraham, I will bless him. Yeah. Even our church is confirmed from the Israeli government as a Christian church that. Show Israel as the only, and I mean it, only democratic country in the Middle East. We have all the freedom to worship. We have all the freedom to share the gospel. Even with our brothers, Muslims and Jewish and nominal Christians. We are protected by the Israeli government. A lot of fake news daily you hear about Israel. But you need to know the truth. That we are so blessed because being part of this country. And I know that a lot of people, Arab people, will not leave Israel even if they have the chance to go to other places. We have the best conditioned life in Israel. How we, I don't understand sometimes when I hear people, when I hear people saying, boycott Israel. Do you know what I mean, boycott Israel? Not using, you know, products that, you know, was produced in Israel. Said, if you really want to boycott Israel, we need to go back to the first century. There's 12 million Jews all over the world. And they got 184 Nobel Prize. They are working for the good for humanity. They are working for the good for good life. I don't know if you have heard recently, 
One doctor, he found a medicine for the Parkinson. They are finding new medicine. You know that if you are, uh, arrive to the uh, age 40, you start to take this medicine, you keep distance with Alzheimer. They have no, you know, now starting the new surgery. You know, it's just 30 minutes. If you have cancer breast, they can do surgery for 30 minutes. They freeze it and they kill it and take it out. They are walking for the good life. Even we have all the right in Israel as Christian Arab. Our children is not forced to serve in the military. That means when my son, he arrived 18 years old, he's not forced to go serving in the military. But when it's war, who defends us and defends my family? The Jewish people. And when it's become to election, my son's voice is equal to his brother Jewish voice in the parliament. And if you don't know, there is more than 13 Arab members Knesset in the parliament in Israel. And every time it's growing. We are living in a country, I don't understand. There's a lot of things in your life you use daily. It was produced in Israel. Once I was preaching in Europe, I traveled a lot. And it was Israeli night. And I'm telling you that it was shocking to me to see someone standing in the back and shouting, Boycott Israel. I didn't know what to do because I didn't expect that. And I, I said to him, please come forward. And he came forward and I said, do you want really to boycott Israel? He said, yes. I said, okay, I agree with you. First of all, I want to take your jeans off. Because jeans was founded by a guy called Levi's and he's Jew. <laughs> and when you go home, don't forget to throw your remote control. Because remote control was discovered by a Jew. And when you go to hospital, ask them not to use the laser. Because laser was founded by a Jew. And if you have a pacemaker, take it out and die because it was founded by a Jew. And then the end, I look at him and I said, do you have Facebook? He said, yes, yes, I, I do. He wanted to contact me. He said, shame on you. How you could use Facebook and a Jewish who found it. You are such blessed, such blessed living in this country. And we, if we are there, because God put us there for a reason. Why? To bring his people back. To let them know Yeshua as a savior. Yes. And that what God is putting in our heart, me and my wife. And it's not easy. Because you're going to be the black sheep. To, to speak publicly about loving Israel and standing with Israel. Because that what the Bible teach and what's the plan of God in the end of the days is going to be fulfilled with me or without me. But I said to God, I want God to obey you. And I want to be not just part in your plan, but I want to be tool in your hands. Amen. Use it to bring your people to Yeshua. Yeah. So we need to understand the irony here. The church, home of Jesus, the King Church, we call it home of Jesus. You know, it's in Hebrew, Habayit Shil Yeshua. Habayit Shil Yeshua, that means the house of home, home of Jesus, the King. Why? Because we believe that he had home in the past. He still, he will until he come back again. If we will be the last two persons standing for that. But what we see we see Genesis 12, 3. Who bless you, Abraham, I will bless him. Mm -hmm. And my message today is a simple question that everyone, everyone needs to ask himself. Are we fulfilling the will of God? 
Are we fulfilling the will of God? We are living in historical days. We are living in the end of the days. And if you don't know, maybe you ask me, Pastor Salim, how do you know that? How do you know that? There's two hands for the end of the days. First hand is Matthew 24, what Jesus mentioned with all the signs. And the Bible teach that in the end we share the gospel and then the end come. So all the signs that Jesus mentioned already happened. One thing is we are fulfilling is sharing the gospel. Telling the truth. And then the end will come. Great. What is the second hand? The second hand, when Jesus was speaking to his disciples while he is leaving this earth, he said to his disciples, I will not be back until I hear you saying again, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Blessed who is coming in the name of the Lord. And this voice, this verse, we start to hear it in Israel. In Israel, there is more than 30,000 Messianic Jews. Even it's low voice now, but it's a start. He's coming back soon. Don't care what people say about you. I don't remember that God created me to satisfy people. If I'm standing in his pulpit and reading from the Torah, from the Bible, I need to obey God's word and not anybody else. You know, God spoke to Gideon in in the book of Judges, chapter 6. He said to Gideon, go with the strength you have. And when the angel was talking to Gideon, Gideon was maybe looking around him, who is talking to? When he said to him, oh mighty hero, <laughs> who is the mighty hero? I'm hiding, you know, trying to, you know, beat wheat for my people to eat. And look what God did from 30,000 soldiers. 300 went to the war. Because God, because God doesn't look for the quantity, he's looking for the quality. He's looking to your heart. If you need to speak the the truth, don't fear people. Fear God. Sometimes we need to pass through in order to get to. Sometimes we need to pass difficult period so we can understand that the will of God must be fulfilled even in difficulties. So there are four covenants the Bible Teach us. But before my question today, how can we be light for the Jews in these days? What is the plan of God that He wants us to involve in? Moreover, if we really understand the Bible, we will follow His plans because it is all about not history, it's all about His story. We need to understand, Pastor, uh, you know, my brother uh, Robert, he was speaking about sacrifices. You know, in the Old Testament, the fire of the anger of God was eating the sacrifices. But when Yeshua, the real sacrifice, came, the real sacrifice ate the fire of the anger of God. And it was once. And And the Holy of All has become one place called the Holies. And we can get in through the blood of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua. How we can be light for the Jews in the end of the days. You know, there are four basic covenants the Bible teaches us. And we can't ignore or deny any one of them. The four covenants together, they fulfill the will of God For the word redemption. And we start with the Abrahamic covenant. This covenant that I call it the unconditional covenant. And we need to understand that this covenant, it doesn't care who Abraham is. It's all about who God is. And if you read how this covenant was made, you will find that Abraham was sleeping through this covenant. 
Because the Lord know our weakness. Yeah. And the Lord said, if I do this covenant to save the world, it's covenant of decision. Yeah. And if I say, I will do it. And he's doing that. God is faithful. If God promised, he keep his promises. If God says he do, he is not a man that he lie. The Bible teaches us in Hebrew chapter 6 and verse 18. So that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have filled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope. You know, you need to understand that this promise, that this covenant that God made with Abraham, it's unchangeable. God will not change his mind. Because he keeps his promises. We need to understand, you know, when God starts something, he never leaves it until he fulfills it. That is what the Lord, Yeshua, on the cross so the second covenant you know after this covenant you know the, the Jewish people they found that okay we are righteous through this covenant the Lord says oh come on wait a minute there is another covenant what is it the Mosaic covenant and it's covenant of instructions so this covenant come with ten commands on the Mount of Sinai through Moses, through Moses, and he bring it to his people. And you know, when the Jewish people they found that no one can stand on these ten commands, they need a redeemer. I was I was discussing with a friend, and he said to me, Pastor Salim. You know, I, I don't understand this Jewish nation. I said, why? He said, just ten commands, and they can't stand with it. What happened? I said, come on. They have ten. I will remind you, in the New Testament, you have two, and you're not standing with. Amen. To love the Lord from all your heart, from all your thoughts, and your neighbor like yourself. Are you fulfilling that? It's two, not ten. But as I mentioned, we are professional in blaming others. And when we start to blame others, we don't have time to love them. All my life, I know that, you know my father, he was working in a kibbutz. Do you know what I mean kibbutz? You know, it's a Jewish community. And he lived his best life, 25 years between these people. They respect him. They were crying when he left his work. They accept us as, as we are. And if, we, if the Bible teaches us that we are light in the end of the days for the Jews, the light needs oil. Many think if we destroy this church in Nazareth, one more branch growing for supporting Israel is dead. And we have been under attack many times, financially. Me and my wife, the church. But God is still faithful. He never forsaken us. This covenant that if we, if we read how God is dealing with His people, He's dealing with His nation. You know, in the book of Romans, Chapter 3, verse 20. You know, the Apostle Paul mentioned, by the law, we have knowledge of sin. I will tell you something. When we start to teach the law more, people will come to Yeshua more and more. But unfortunately, our pulpits become a place to teach what people would like to hear. And if he's not satisfied, he'll leave. Do you know? I have one of the service. I call it waving service. Do you know what is it? Standing outside the door, telling these people that they don't agree that, you know, the plan of God. Bye-bye. 
Why? Because they will not just not help others, they will destroy others. Yeah. Don't worry how many people you have in your congregation. Care are their heart is with God. Yeah. Are they fulfilling the will of God? It's not about what we are doing to God. It's all about what God already did for us. Yeah. Yeah. Through the cross, through Yeshua. Yeah. Therefore, when the nation of Israel received the Mosaic covenant, this covenant paves the way for the next covenant, and I mean the new covenant, through the blood of Yeshua, Mashiach. Yeah. And this covenant, you know, covenant of ability and choice. This covenant, it's like, uh, if I want to explain it in simple words, I want to say like someone has paid for you all your trip to come visiting Israel, and he paid the ticket for your flight, but it's your decision to get into the airplane or to stay out. Jesus paid. And I will tell you a secret. Jesus didn't come for Christians. Because there was no Christians. He, he came for all the world. Amen. Everyone except Yeshua, he will be saved. You will meet in heaven many nations, the Bible said. If you are not accepting them here, how will you spend the eternity with them? Amen. Or do you think that heaven is produced for you only? <laughs> or for Baptist? Yeah. Or for a Catholic? Or for Orthodox? God is looking to the heart. And this new covenant, if I want to ask you today, why did Jesus die on the cross? Maybe you will answer to redeem us from the sin. My next question comes directly. Where do you find that? Very easy. It's in the Abrahamic covenant. It's fulfilling the will of God in the Abrahamic covenant, the decision. Therefore, Jesus said one on the cross to fulfill the promise of God in the Abrahamic covenant. Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Jesus said on the cross, so that the decision that God made in the Abrahamic covenant could be made real in our life. This was provided through the new covenant that the prophet Jeremiah prophesied about in chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. If you don't know in the new co- in the new covenant, in the new, sorry, in the New Testament, there's 283 quotes from the Old Testament, 116 of them just from Psalms. Every verse, you touch it. You start to move it from the Old Testament. Something is moving in the New Testament. I will share with you an interesting thing. I didn't plan to share it, but it's in my heart. You know, all of us know that Psalms 84. And if you read it, you know, in the beginning, he said for the director choir... On the jetty for sons of Korah. Okay? And jetty, it's instrument, it's a musical instrument that was used, but also it's mean press, gut in Hebrew. Gut shmanim, get themani, where Jesus spent last, ta- last, last night with his disciples and get themani, it's gut shmanim, it's olive press. Mm-hmm. Olive press. And what that's connected with what Jesus passed. Three times the Bible said that Yeshua was going to his disciples. And every time he's going back, at the end, his sweating become blood. It's normally when, when they used to press the olive, it's three process. The first one, they get the best oil. And it goes to the house of the Lord. That's what the Torah teach. The second press, they add more pressure, more weight. And the second press is going to be used for the families, houses, and for, you know, cosmetic, you know, products. 
And there is third press that gives the oil to be used for lighting the, you know, oil lamp daily. So on the jetty, what a jetty is? There is a man called Goliath. Where he is from? Please, when you start reading your Bible, I want you to ask questions. Don't fear to ask questions. The Lord said, in Isaiah, come to discuss, the Lord said. Ask questions. You know, Goliath, he's from Jetty, where the last night where Jesus spent. And the Bible said that Jesus went a stone through. Come on, let's think about it. What he's trying to tell us. Do you remember the story? Like Jesus, he's rem reminding his disciples. Do you remember the story of David and Goliath? Do you remember the stone that killed Goliath? I am the stone. I am the stone. The stone that all the nation rejected become the stone of the cornerstone. He's telling his disciples that if you don't recognize, it's all about what happened in the Old Testament. It's shadow for what's going to happen yeah. today. Amen. We need to understand that the new covenant, it's come that release us from sin. And I like so much what Brother Robert mentioned about every, everything that you see here. You can't say it's for the Jewish and it's over. No, because it's everything, it's symbol for new things that happen. Yeah. The menorah, it's symbol for the word of God. The table of the bread presents, it's symbol for what? Come on, we just have it. Communion. It's not coincidence. And when he mentioned, you know, the altar, the golden altar, when the innocence in smell of God. He smelled the sacrifice that Jesus gave. So the new covenant is a new beginning. Yeah. We need to trust the Lord and understand that the Lord fulfilled His plan through His Son, Yeshua HaMashiach. It is interesting to ask the Lord, what is the next step? What is the next step? If we really know what is the next step, we need to be ready. Yes. Many of us is not ready. Many of us thinking that is still have time. Then come the Davidic covenant and its eternal life and kingdom. The Bible teaches us in Luke chapter 1, verse 32, He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign against the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Amen. You know, you need to understand that God himself even called his name connected to the patriarchs. He called himself the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How we can ignore that? If you try to delete that, you need to delete 70% of your Bible. You can't. So my question is, Paul is teaching, you know, all my point by mentioning these covenants is to tell you that we have one book. Amen. Not two, the old and the new, we have one book called the Bible. Amen. And you know how we can bring the Jews back, how we can let them know Yeshua, by making them jealous and not envious. I will explain. Because there is a lot of our Bibles using the word envious. And for me, I prefer to choose the word jealous. I will explain what's the difference. If I meet somebody else's wife, and I like it better than my own, which hasn't happened, dear. 
but it could be. No, I'm kidding. I will be envious. Envious is your emotion when you see something that belonged to someone else and you wish you had it. You got it? Jealous. What is jealousy? Jealousy, if someone runs off with my wife, I will be jealous. Jealousy is what you feel when something that already belonged to you is being taken away from you. We want to tell them, this is your Messiah. This is your scriptures. You know, you need to understand that God called us to tell them it's a privilege to be one family because God is gathering his family back again. We are living in historical days, as I mentioned in the beginning. It's very important to understand. In other words, we are here because what they have. Do you want to boycott Israel? First of all, if you want to boycott Israel, you need to boycott your Bible because it was written by Jew. Right. Who wrote your Bible? Mm. You do, I, do you know who wrote your Bible? <laughs> they are Jewish. Yeah. Do you want to boycott your Bible? Uh-huh. You need to understand that all what you want them to know, that we found something that belonged to you. That makes them jealous. And if we adopt their culture, it's for one reason, to win them to Christ. When God bless someone, he never cares again. Look at the nation of Israel. Look at how God blessed this nation. I need to understand, really, how we can... Ignore all that true. How? How you want me to lie to my... Even I tried to lie to myself. I didn't success. <laughs> Trying to build my own doctrines. I found the Holy Spirit is taking me to see the truth. And to follow God's plans. I have some questions to you this morning. Have we as a church fulfilled the desire of God in the past? Unfortunately, not. Even we were very bad. By the way, our church decided to do something that's, if I share it with you, you will say that you are crazy. The church decided to visit the Holocaust survival's house. And we bought for them a towels for the body. And it took us one week fasting and praying, going to this place. Because if I'm going, if I was one of them, I will not accept you to get an even for the past that I saw from your behavior. All of us know what's happened with the Nazi camps. Once I was as a guest speaker in Auschwitz. And when I arrived in the middle of the tour to the shoes of the children, I broke down. I can't continue. I was weeping. And when we get into the house, this People still hiding the food. They still hiding the bread under their pillow. They still have the numbers. And we would get in. The Holy Spirit was there. And I start to teach. And I told them that we love you. Why you pass in the past not related to Christianity with anything? Yeshua teach us to love. And we, heard, we are here to tell you that we love you. And th- what we saw? Just tears. And the team in our church start to hug these people. And they start to speak to us. And some of them told us about real believers that they helped them to escape. Mm-hmm. And some of them did start to tell us about their stories. 
It was a wonderful night that we can't forget. We felt that it's heaven on earth. We need to understand this question. Have we as church fulfilled the desire of God in the past? My next question, are we fulfilling his desire today as servants of God? And the next question, will we fulfill his desire in the future? Bringing the light of salvation to the Israeli nation. We, the Arab pastor, we can be strong witnesses for the Jews. At the end of the days, and through our behavior, we can win them to Christ. Your support to us for our project push us forward to continue and to do more and more projects reaching this nation. Showing love, showing mercy. We can share the love of Yeshua that can help us to continue forward and to be light. We need the oil to continue. And sometimes it's difficult. The real test for Christians in these days is how they behave when they are in control of their governments and they have the authority. You need to understand, if you stand against his people, you will suffer. I'm, I'm saying that publicly without any fear. If you stand against his people, you will suffer and you will lose. And the authority that you have and the power that you have, the control that you have will be taken from you and will be given to your enemy. That's what happened to the Israeli nation when they disobeyed God. They were slaves to their enemies. Today, as Christians, we have the authority. We control still some of our parliaments. Ask the Lord what we can do to fulfill your plan. Oh Lord, we need to understand that it's time to wake up. Please ask yourself these two questions. Why Israel still exists? Please ask yourself this question. Why Israel still exists? It's not because who they are. It's because who God is. And a lot of words comes against Israel. You are not fighting the Jewish nation. You are fighting the will of God. Amen. And you will not succeed. You need to understand. My next question. Why God rejected his people? I was asking very simple questions. And the answer is always because they disobey God. My next question to every one of us. Are we better today? Are we better? Do you know our churches become like a museum? We are losing the authority that the Lord gave us. We are preaching what people would like to hear. Now what God is saying. We stop rebuking the sin because we want, don't want to lose members in our church. This is not the love that the Lord talked about. Speaking the truth is the most important part in the message. And you need to understand, standing for the truth, it costs you sometimes sacrifices. We need to understand that today the church is suffering. The church is losing the aim that God created for. I'm sorry to say it publicly. Accepting homosexual and lesbian yeah, yeah. in our churches. Yeah, I've been in, invited once to England to, to share the word of God. One week before, I received an email from the pastor. He said, Pastor Salim, please don't mention that homosexual is a sin in your preaching. Because you'll go to jail for six months. I said, okay. I will not mention, I promise you. Because I'm not coming. Amen. I cancel. Amen. I can't. Amen. I can't. Amen. I'm not there because, you know, but they're going to support you, Pastor Salim. Please understand. We need support. We need help. 
but not compromising with the word of God. Amen. The word of God is not for sale. Not our belief even. Right. So if we understand, it's time. I think it's time to read again and again Romans chapter 9, 10 and 11. We need to understand the will of God to be part of our plans. For me and my church, we want to be part of God's plan yes. and to fulfill His desire. What about you, dear friends? Mm -hmm. It's your choice today. This is the only reason that if you read the story that I shared in the beginning about the eldest son, this story, it was ended open. We don't know if this eldest son get in to celebrate or he stayed out. Why? Because God is telling you, this is your choice. Amen. Do you want to be part of the family? Or you want to be out, standing, without sharing the rejoice of your brother coming back. He was dead and he came to life again. He was a sinner and was forgiven. We need to understand that in the end of the days there is a lot of lies in our life. Yeah. Maybe, maybe some people will tell, tell me, Salim, all, all your doctrines... What you shared today is wrong. Maybe what you shared, it's just your thoughts. And maybe it's Zionism or Zionism. It's not about political. It's about spiritual plan that God prepared. And even if I was shared tonight, today, this morning, if I forget everything, I need to remember one thing that was mentioned in Matthew 28. Go to all nations. Aren't the Jew nation? Yes, they are. And they are priority for God. The Jews first. That's what the Bible teaches. I don't know if you have other Bible. Don't know if you're reading the same Bible. I believe everything what the Word of God says. And to listen to the voice of God. You know, sometimes, I'm sorry to say it, but... <laughs> I was reading the story of Balaam, and I was shocked that the donkey understand the will of God and the prophet not. And even the donkey spoke to tell this prophet, you are going the wrong way. Come on, what more than that? Really, we need to know what more than that. We need to understand that the word Israel and the word Zion are mentioned in our Bible. Do you want also to take it out? Like the new version that's coming out for the Bible, now using the word Jesus within their word Allah. His name will be called Immanuel. That means God with us. Yeshua, because he's the Savior. And we need to understand that God's will will be fulfilled. Be careful from replacement theology. Because normally the argument that the church is fulfillment of all the Bible kingdom, the prophecies is not only error of teaching, an equally serious one of the assertion that the church has replaced Israel, this is called replacement theology. Mm -hmm. The argument usually goes like this. Since the Jews rejected Jesus as their Messiah, God rejected them. No. No. He poured out his wrath upon them, scattered them all over the earth, and transferred the promises made to them to spiritual Israel, the church. God has no purpose left for the Jews. The reestablishment of modern-day Israel is therefore merely an accident of history with no spiritual meaning. That is a replacement theology. But let's see what I want. I don't want to take more time, but so quickly. You know, the position, you know, the Jews' position with God's eyes. There is no doubt that God put out his wrath on the Jewish people in the first century. 
in response to their rejection of his son, Jesus, as their Messiah. Moreover, there is no doubt they have remained under the discipline of God to this day. However, that does not mean God rejected them. Because God loved the Jewish people, even in their rebellions, in the everlasting Abrahamic covenant, God told Abraham that he would bless those who bless Israel and curse those who cursed them. Genesis 12, 3. Yeah. In like manner, he told the prophet Zechariah that he would touch, who touch Israel, touch the apple of his eye. Yeah. Zechariah 8, 2, verse 8. Also the prophet Isaiah you know, proclaimed that God could never forget Israel because he had them inscribed on the palms of his hand. Yeah. Isaiah 49 and verse 14. And also the prophet Jeremiah, you know, stated that the Jewish people would exist as a nation forever. Amen. Jeremiah 31 verse 36. Also, Paul's view, view, viewpoint to the Jewish nation, you know, he loved his people. He was worried about them. He was caring for them all the time. In fact, Paul rejected replacement theology before he even gets to these chapters, 9, 10, and 11. You know, he begins in chapter 3 with two rhetorical questions. Did you have any advantages with God? Had their unbelief un unified the faithfulness of God? And you know that it's different answer between the church and Paul. Because in the end, Paul says that God never forsaken his people. Right. How does the Apostle Paul answer these questions? He responds in exactly the opposite way of the answer of the church today. He declared that the Jews do have advantage because they were entrusted with the oracles of God. You know what that means? That God gave them the word that he spoke. To bring to the wall. And the second question. Uh, that, that you know. Did God reject his people? It's very, it's very simple. It's very easy and very clear. If you read in Romans. You can find. May it never be. I want to tell you. I'm done. And I know that we are alive. And many is not happy with what I said. But I feel my Lord is happy and satisfied. Amen. Amen. And that's all what I want. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Thank you, Salim. Everybody give uh, Salim a hand. Will you please? God bless you, Salim. How many of you are glad that Salim came today? Amen. Share this message online. Again, comment, uh, like this message. Tell us where you're watching this from. Amen. If everyone would, let's please rise. Uh, I want to close out today's service the same way I do every single service, with the ironic benediction. I want to bless you as we prepare to send you out. Now, if you're here live, we still got a couple things we got to do. We take communion here in a moment. Uh, we have a time of prayer. So if you're here live, don't go anywhere, okay? Uh, if you're watching on video, uh, we're about to close out the service. So let us say the ironic benediction together. Get with your families. Bless one another as we do this. Yes, this is, this is good. We bless one another. Let us say the blessing together. Yavarekha Adonai Vayishmarekha Yaev Adonai Penavelecha Vikunekha Yisa Adonai Penavelecha Vayasim leka shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. Peace in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, our Sar Shalom, our Prince of Peace. Amen and Amen. May God bless you all. Thank you all for watching today again. Share this message. Come back and join us next week, every Saturday, live here at 1030, or live stream at around 1140. Shabbat Shalom, Shavua Tov. God bless you.